Okay, um, continuation of perspective drawing. And, um, you know, say if I was sitting in front of, of this building, there's a little glare on it, sorry. Um, again, just like we did the boxes, I would start with the part of the building that's closest to me. So I would look at this part right here. It's, it's really pretty much straight on. And I would draw a rectangle. I would note where am I is is am I um, I level thank you my brain is just <laughs> I level on this one I'm I level to the bottom of the door do you see how that line is pretty straight mm -hmm. now it's pretty you know if you how, how there's hardly any yeah right there I'm eye level to the bottom of the door. So it's this side and this side are, are even. And normally, honestly, normally you don't have a picture that way, uh, but you've got these stairs that will give you some depth. So the stairs will take it a little below horizon line or your eye level line. But the side of this building and the side of this building are the, on the same line because of where you're visually looking. Mm -hmm. And then you would create, you know, your up and down, up and down, and you know, you can just hold your pencil or your you know, as you're drawing, you can hold your pencil out and look and see what angle is that wall. <coughs> and where where out here, you know, would it hit? So, you know, knowing that angle, you can also look at the top of this. That that would you know. So so you'll you'll rotate. See how the, even the edge of the the railing mm -hmm. lines up. Pull this down. The edge of that lines up. Pull it down. You know. So once you see how this works, it'll help you draw things that are connected. So that's that's what I want. That that's what we're leading to, to where you can take a look at a building, and you can go, oh, well, let's see. The vanishing point would be way out here, and the top of the all the top of the the windows would aim to the same vanishing point as the bottom of the windows, and you'd be able to get your railing right. The railing up here is fatter than the railing down here because it vanishes in the distance. Okay? Is that all making sense? Mm -hmm. Yay. Okay, here's another example um, of a vanishing point, and it's, a, it's your traditional road. You know, way back here, it'll vanish somewhere. And you know, it's, to me, it's interesting just to take this, I love, again, why this clear ruler where I can create a pivot point, and I can just rotate it around to see if I can find, you know, the vanishing point. This piece right here is different from these. And there's there's sometimes... So it has a different vanishing point. I mean, we saw it did, but that's why, because it's something different. It's, yeah, and some of them will. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, But it's just look for it. Um, and, and that, you know, this... That's going to be further over, so it's not the same vanishing point as the road because it's for, it's not ending at the same point. They don't run together. They they end up at the horizon line, but they don't cross each other because this road doesn't cross that bridge. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, a couple other things before we get to the building while we're on uh, that. If, if I have, I don't think I've done this with y'all, the... Posts for fence. Have I done that with y'all? Okay, I'll just do that real quick. All right, say, or and then this could be light posts, any, anything that continually gets smaller in the distance. So say if I'm, I'm say I have this horizon lines way up here, I'm, I'm doing this field, and there's this road, you know, that, that comes in, and it, you know, obviously gets bigger. You know, this is, don't don't pay attention to the lovely road, but we'll just pretend that, and we'll make it even. We'll just we'll pretend it's straighter road. It's easier for this demonstration. 
But say I have a fence post or a light post. I'll just make a light post because it's taller. I used to have, you know, the electrical things, you know, say like that. And say they're all along this road. How am I going to get the right perspective and have them end? Well, first of all, if the vanishing point's down here, it's taller. You know, I, I look and see way out here how far above the horizon line it might be. It might be just that far above the horizon line because it's getting smaller as it gets out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shift to a pencil because I'm going to have eraser lines to meet. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to this, I'm working with the center post. This is like those boxes I was telling you about, those flying boxes. Same kind of thing. All right, when I draw these posts, they have to be within that space. Mm -hmm. If it's not within that space, then they're the wrong size. Mm -hmm. Because if they're all the same size and it's going off into the distance, they have to get smaller. Okay? So I'm just going to pretend I know how far apart I want them. The first ones are, are you know, a visual measure. And once you get the first two, then, uh, so I'm going to say that this next one is this tall. And if you want to do the, uh, the bars out, you know, it's like we did the boxes where, okay, the bar would go to here. Oops. It doesn't start at the top. I'm making it more difficult than it needs to be. Okay, the top of that would be there. Okay. Okay, but do you, do you see what I'm using? The same technique we just did with those floating boxes is if I'm me measuring from the top of this post to the top of this post and I want to know where this connects, then I'm going to just, I just went down to the, that connecting point mm -hmm. So I knew where that would connect. I mean, it takes some practice. Mm -hmm. But then now that I have the first two established, I'm going to see how tall this is, and I'm just going to say uh, that's about the middle. If you really are anal about it, you can measure it. Okay? But I'm not. Now, I go from the top of this post through the center of that one, and that tells me where the next one will be. So this one will go up. Again, I'd want it vertically straight up and down. And where's the next one? I'm going to go from the top of this one. Here's halfway. Now this is if they're evenly spaced. But what's cool about this is, you know, it will get smaller and smaller and smaller. But it's going to give you that illusion of depth. You do it the same way if it's just a post on the side, you know, if it's a... Can you go back to the very first one and show me how you got the space for the second one? Yeah. The first one was a bit... The, the, first, the first two that you draw are... You, it's you visual. Just it. okay. You just say, well, I want it to be this far away or it looks like it's this far away. And then you, you, still, you still aim out here to know how tall it is. Right. Okay, yeah. But say, okay, say there's a, uh, say there's a fence. Well, I'll just pretend. Here, here's, a, here's another, this is a whole other picture, okay? Mm -hmm. And here, here's a horizon line up here. And I'm going to have this fence post. You know, fence post, you'll see a lot of fence posts in painting. And uh, it's, I want it to disappear over here. And now, it might, it's, it also, chances are the ground isn't going to be quite this straight. Right. But if the ground goes up or meanders a little bit, just meander a little bit with your post. But if here's the if the second post is about here, 
go through the center, the next post will be about here, the next post will be about here, the next post will be about... See, I'm just, I'm just aiming it's where your ruler hits when you're at the halfway point. The halfway point. Okay. And and if and if it's you know, if the horizon line's fairly evil evil. Even <laughs> that's awful. But see how this one this one doesn't go as diagonal as this. So it you're gonna see more of them, but they're gonna eventually get smaller and smaller and smaller. So they'll they'll get Okay, does that make sense? But I wanted you to see if you want to measure something that's evenly spaced and goes mm -hmm. off in the distance, um, that that usually works. Okay. Okay. See it. All right. Move, can you move it one more over, like doing the fourth one? Like Here. Pretend you're redrawing that fourth line now. This line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fourth pole. Okay, so the fourth pole, I go to the second pole, uh -huh. and so I find the center the of the third pole, and that tells me where the bottom, bottom of, of that one is. And then I draw it as tall as, as the yeah, in, those in-between lines. Right. Okay, got it. Okay? Now, just while we're on this same vanishing thing, I'll just show you um, what I did with those boxes, because it's, it's really kind of cool. You can do things... It doesn't have to be, you know, flying boxes by any means, but um, just the same concept. Okay, so if, it, if I have this square thing, I'm going to have a vanishing point back here. Just like the, the boxes we did uh, on, on that previous sheet, um, this time I'm, going, I'm drawing all the way to the vanishing point. Because I'm going to cut, whoops, it went very dark. I do want to come back and erase some. Alright, so this shows me uh, how it goes off into the distance. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to draw a line here to show the top. And I connect it here, line it straight up and down. So that is a box, that's a cube. All right, if I want to draw another cube but further away, I'm going to just slide my ruler over. And again, I'm not, I don't care how far over I go on this because it's, I'm not trying to do an evenly spaced thing. But this is going to represent space now. I just put a gap between here and here. So how do I finish that gap off? I just draw the side down, just like some of those boxes you were doing that were running into each other. So this is in front of this with space in between. Okay, so I, if I want more, uh, uh, maybe I want this box to be longer this time. I just go up to where the size of that box I want it to be, or that figure. So this is kind of like we're going to do with buildings. If I have buildings along the side street and there's a gap between the buildings, there might be a sidewalk here and I'm looking down on it. Same kind of thing. Um, but the, this is where you'll be able to start to see it yourself. Um, you'll be more aware of it. And again, I erase where the space is and draw that closed and that closed. It could be a train, right? It mm -hmm. could be. You know, you had to but there's times when you have things one right after another, mm -hmm. but if you draw them all together, it's going to be a lot easier than if you try to draw them individually and then get them to line up right. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all try that. <clears throat> Well, it made sense when you did it. <laughs> All right, you want to do it? You mean do it? Want, you mean do it together with you? I, no, I mean I'm okay with trying. Start it. with a square. <clears throat> I'm still back at trying to get my poles. <laughs> That's okay. Well, I'm throwing a lot at you because I mean, it's just the 
the, just an introduction to it. You know, you don't have to do a full-fledged cityscape or anything, but just knowing kind of how to attack it when you see it will keep you from panicking, <laughs> hopefully. Well, your vanishing point back there. My, my, I just picked yeah. a spot. spot. I just put a spot on my paper and, okay. and just yeah. drew that was far enough away. Okay. You know, the closer it is, the less you'll see space. Uh, between. But yeah, making that into a train would, it, yeah, that'd be a, yeah. a good example. Mm -hmm. Good idea, Jan. All right, I'm going to pause that. Well, should I just let it go? Then y'all can just forward through it. Do y'all even look at them? No. Okay. <coughs> Actually, and then I'll see if I can find some other examples. I'll put the kitty one up again. Just I don't think I, I don't know that I videoed that, so you can look at that again. You can always pause it. There's the room in space. That's what I called it. I want to show you how to do those ribbons, too. Those are a lot of fun. You'll go, oh, that's so cool. quite in focus. This was an assignment uh, spheres and ribbon that uh, I took from this magazine to create assignments for students and it's just a way of, to practice your shading to get the, the bend and, and motion. So I'll uh, go over that in a minute and that can be you know, possible homework thing for you to try. Did anybody try any pointillism? No. Isn't yeah. that the dots? Yeah, there was something that we practiced on. But not a lot of it, but a very tiny bit of it. That's okay. Oh, I think it was on one of the bases or something that I did. And Can you split that other one up? The one we're working on? Oh, sorry, yeah. Perfect. Yep, keep going. Mm -hmm. Decide, you just decide how much space. I would go ahead and draw, oh, you got them, I just, can't. I would go ahead and draw that line. It's not great. Oh, it doesn't have to be. I mean, but just so that you already have those diagonal lines there, yeah. and then then you'll just create how big a space you want in between. See, for that one with the poles, mm -hmm. my vanishing point was over here somewhere, but I kept moving. Oh, I didn't know, like I got to reline it up. Yeah, that's that's, perfect, that's when. But... Yeah, you, right. you have to have the, the taping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, 
Uh, one thing I did not do, and uh, should you always keep the same vanishing point for the whole picture? I mean, well, these don't have to be because we're just practicing, but usually well, no, you have a different vanishing point, don't you? Well, it, it depend, if you have different things that are vanishing in the distance, they'll be similar, they'll be close. Right. It'll end up on the same horizon line. Mm -hmm. That's what's wrong. Okay. But, okay, one thing I did on this one, see, is I did this perfectly straight at the bottom. I mm -hmm. did not have this angling out. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me do another one real quick because um, I, I just did the, this. Okay, I'm going to pretend my vanishing point's over here for this, and that's going to be up there for that. No, let's do, we'll do it up there. I'll aim up there. About how I had that one. Never mind. All right, so here's here's a box. Ooh, that's going to be really skinny. Oh well. Okay, so this this one in particular is um, because I did this straight and flat. It was easy for me to do the sides because they were all straight and flat. This these were not; they were all facing me straight on. If it's facing me straight on, uh, I don't have to I don't have to have the angle to the vanishing point. But if it's not facing me straight on, like I'm this corner is closer to me, it still works the same way as what we were doing. Uh, it just looks a little more skewed because the angle is, is kind of that way. So it'll be skinnier in between. And because it's so angle so close and because it's so close to the vanishing point in distance if, if this was further over you would see more space between because this is really close to straight up and down remember when you're straight on something you only see two sides mm -hmm. so anyway might have totally confused you there but didn't mean to but the main thing is keep your your verticals straight up and down, and uh, and that'll help. Whoops. Didn't do that one right. See how, see how, well, that makes sense. Anyway. Okay. Y'all totally confused. A tad. <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah, you got it. Oh, y'all got it. I'm more confused than y'all are. No, you're good. Yes. Now, this, this, this needs to go from here to here and then, then down. You, you created a, a point that's off that okay. line. Yeah. I didn't know how, what I was doing. That's all right. Yeah. So the front, the front of that is the you know you you'll always stay within that this and this right. Okay. And then this this point this corner will come down, and this will come across like that. Okay. Yeah, this line should go over there, right? 
Right. See, because you're, yeah, cause you're working at an angle. Yeah, I had now, it wrong. Because see, when, okay. I did, when I did it, I drew it straight yeah. on. So it was easier to do. Okay. But when you have it at an angle like right. this, that's exactly, you're doing it exactly okay. right. All right, great. Yay. Oh. Yay. Star pupils. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. And here, here was one that I drew that where if you're doing something, um, if you look up here for just a second, here's the horizon line mm -hmm. through here where you, you see the top and the bottom is the center of the post is eye level. So it just gets smaller and smaller but stays a lot. So if it all depends on where your eye level is and if your vanishing point <coughs> is further up or further down. Just like those boxes we drew this morning, some of the boxes were above the horizon line, some were below. But if you start where um, they're on the horizon line, then um, you want the top of each of the posts above the horizon line and the bottom of the post below the horizon line as they disappear. But it's still, you know, this, this dot, 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 goes through the center. This one goes through the center. It still, it still gives you the illusion of depth. And if I turned it this way, and it could be a railroad track. So it works the same way. Just like when I turned those boxes upside down, it still made sense because the perspective is right. Thank you. 